pep talks that you should be taking in 2025. Okay, let's see if I agree with this list or not. Number one. IGF-1. So yeah, you could directly inject IGF-1 or IGF-1 LR3, which is more easily accessible. Or you could first take a compound that enhances growth hormone, which then would stimulate the liver to proportionally increase IGF-1. Which is the better option? Well, I believe the latter. It appears from a deep dive into the research that in cases of surplus IGF-1, growth hormone is actually protective against IGF-1-induced insulin resistance. So why not garner all of the benefits of growth hormone alongside IGF-1 while maintaining a more metabolically friendly growth hormone to IGF-1 ratio? Number two. Two, retitrutide. I agree here. Retitrutide, it does indeed pair well with the IGF-1 enhancing compounds on this list because it promotes insulin sensitivity, which counteracts IGF-1's propensity to expedite the development of insulin resistance long-term. Number three, MK677. Yes, I would actually rather use MK677 to enhance my IGF-1 because it stimulates IGF-1 release by first activating the ghrelin receptor and stimulating growth hormone release. So if you can control the hunger increase and you can keep your calories constant, MK can actually even be more metabolically friendly than the equivalent dosage of HGH, although technically MK is not a peptide. And number four, GHK copper. So yeah, I've seen some pretty wild face transformations from GHK copper. Seems to have a favorable side effect profile. I have not tried it yet, but if enough of you are interested, I may do an experiment. And for all your supplement needs, check out the free Natty Plus cheat sheet. It is in the description below.